Okay, everybody. So, in today's video, I wanted to give one last example of a telescoping series. And in this problem, which is one of the ones you'll find on the quiz, it's not apparent that it's a telescoping series when you look at it right away. Uh, but I gave a hint somewhere, I think it, on Blackboard, I gave a hint that it is, in fact, a telescoping series. Okay. Now, so that's the objective of this video is to do the problem right here, the one you're looking at right now. Um, but it's I always like to warm up a little bit, you know, rather than just do this problem, which is somewhat difficult for a telescoping series problem. I thought I'd show you one that's a little bit simpler. And I'll say that although this example is simpler than the one I'm about to show you, it has a lot of common elements that I want to emphasize, okay? Okay, so say you had this series, and we want to calculate the sum of that series. The sum is the same thing as the number the series converges to, okay? Meaning, if you were to take this series and add, this series goes forever, it never ends, but if you add up more and more and more and more terms, the grand total at any point along the way is getting closer to something. That's the sum of the series. And just almost by brute force, if I was patient enough, I could I could like calculate the first term, then I could press plus, then the second term, then plus, then the third term. And I could keep doing that and hitting enter. And if the series had a sum, that total every time would be getting closer to whatever that sum was, all right? So it's, it's really just computation. I mean, you, you could just, by brute force, add up a lots of terms with the calculator, and that enough might give you an idea what the sum is, all right? Okay, so with this one, I, I thought, well, maybe it's telescoping, and the reason I thought that is because I see that as you go through the series, the difference between this number and this number is gonna be one. This number is gonna be one more than that one. And then I'm subtracting them, so I'm thinking that maybe there will be some cancellation. Maybe uh, the middle is going to collapse out of the series, which is uh, the essence of a telescoping series. So I decided to write some terms down to see if that pattern holds true. First term, one-fourth minus one-fifth. Second term, one-fifth minus one-sixth. Third term, one-sixth minus one-seventh. You get the idea. And yes, the middle does collapse out of it. That's what we would expect if it was a telescoping series. Now, from here, I want to notice something about the partial sums. What is S4, the sum of the first four terms? One term, two terms, three terms, four terms. What's the sum of the first four terms? Well, that would be, with all the canceling considered, one-fourth minus one-eighth, okay. What's the sum of the first five terms? Well, use your imagination or, you, you know, you can write the fifth term on your own paper right there if you want to, but it'll be one-fourth minus one-ninth. And the sum of the first six terms, one-fourth minus one-tenth. There's a pattern there, okay. The sum of the first n terms is going to be one-fourth minus one over n plus one, okay. All right. Uh, oh, I sorry. I meant to write n plus four. N plus four. Okay. Right. Because like, could this calculate? Could this verify to me that the sum of the first four terms was one fourth minus one eighth? Well, I'll put four in. What's well, s four? One fourth minus one over four plus four. That's eight. So there's my formula for the sum of any number of terms that you want to. Okay. Now, all right. What's that have to do with the sum, though? Well. If this series had a sum, if it converged, the more terms I add together, the closer my answer gets to something. Another way of saying that is that the sum is the limit as n goes to infinity of the partial sum. Whatever the partial sum is, whatever formula the partial sum takes on. Now that's true not just for a telescoping series, but for any series. So if I can have a series, and if I can find a formula for the general partial sum, the sum of the first n terms, then the sum of the series is the limit as n goes to infinity 
of that partial sum, which in this case is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 fourth minus 1 over n plus 4, okay? Where as n goes to infinity, um, 1 over n plus 4 goes to 0, so it's 1 fourth, okay? So the sum is 1 fourth. Uh, you add this thing out to infinity, grand total is going to be 1 over 4. Now, so that's the official way to see it. That's what I should tell you in calculus too. Another way to see it is, is you could say, well, in this series, as I keep adding, the middle cancels out, and this last term won't. You know, no matter how far I write this out, that first term won't cancel, and that last term won't cancel. But what's that last term doing as I go further along? It's going away. It's getting smaller. It's going to zero. So see how this tells you the same thing? All right. Now, so that sets the basis for what I want to do with this other problem. So here's, this one's the main objective of the video today. So calculate the sum of this series. Hint, it's a telescoping series. Well, uh, so say you know it's a telescoping series because of the hint, then we're going to expect some canceling to happen. And that's going to take some addition and subtraction, right? I mean, that's common sense. Like, that's what canceling is, at least in this context. So I thought that, well, that's probably going to need a little bit of algebra. It's probably going to need to be broken down or taken apart somehow. So I started by wanting to combine these fractions. 1 minus 1 over n squared, okay? 1 minus 1 over n squared, I can combine to this. And then I could factor that, all right? Now, from here, I still don't see any canceling. I don't see any addition or subtraction uh, that would be necessary for a telescoping series. So I'll use some rules of logarithms. So for any logarithm, a division in there is a subtraction out here. And a multiplication in here is an addition out there. An exponent, it could be a coefficient interchangeably. And if that's negative 2 natural log of n, I'll say negative natural log of n minus natural log of n. So that's what I'll use, where I see that there's some pluses and some minuses, and that gives me a chance to see, perhaps see somehow that it's a telescoping series. Okay. Now, I'll continue the breakdown using that form of what I started with on the next page. Here's what it looks like, okay? There's my series. I want to do like I did on that other problem. I want to, what did I do? I, I you know, I wanted to see it. I wrote out the terms, and then I could see, like, oh, one-fifth and negative one. They're gone. One six, negative one six, they're gone. Oh, everything in the middle is gone. I want to see something like that, okay? So, uh, this is a little bit long to write out across the page, so here's the way I decided to do it. There's the first term. That's what, that's what this is if you start with n being two. You get natural log three, natural log one, natural log two, natural log two, okay. And then in this, Next row is the second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, sixth term. Okay, and then it keeps going, of course. But if, let's say that I'm going to take it up to, just look at this much. Here's the first four terms. All right. So let's see. I get natural log three, cancels natural log three, two with two, four with four, three with three, five with five, four. So you get the idea. Uh, a lot of it does cancel. And in fact, for the sum of the first four terms, which is all you can see on the screen at this point, the only thing that doesn't cancel is negative natural log two, natural log six, and negative natural log five. So a lot of it cancels, all right? So I think I'll say that S4, the sum of the first four terms is negative natural log two plus natural log six minus natural log five. Now, um, I'll rewrite this that way, okay? And I'll tell you why in a minute. But it's isn't it true that for logarithms, a subtraction on the outside is a division on the inside? Now, I want to pick up on a pattern to these partial sums. So here's the sum of the first four terms. Okay, so there's four terms right there. 
let's look at the sum of the first five terms. Now, now what you see on the screen is the sum of the first five or the, the first five terms from that series. And we get a little bit more to cancel out of it. Uh, so let's see, I got natural log six, natural log six, negative natural log five, natural log five. So of the first five terms, everything cancels but negative natural log two, natural log seven, and minus natural log six. So that would make the sum of the first five terms, negative natural log two plus natural log seven minus natural log six, where again, I'll combine those last two into that. Okay, now for why am I combining the last two? Well, because I know that based on what I told you before, the sum of the series is the limit as n goes to infinity for whatever the formula for the partial sum is, s of n, okay? And this is what I thought I could do something with. So do you see a pattern between these? S4, negative natural log two, plus natural log six over five. S5, negative natural log two, plus natural log seven over six. Here's your pattern. Sn, negative natural log two, plus natural log n plus two over n plus one. Uh, try it out. Does, does, if you put a four right there, is it gonna verify that S4 is negative natural log two plus natural log six over five? Well, so four plus two is six, four plus one is five. Yes, it will. Uh, whatever index you put there for n, four or five or six or seven or eight or however much of this you want to write down, it will verify it. Now I have a formula for the partial sum of that series that I started with, okay? The sum of the series is this limit. Now I want to leave this part up to you, okay? All you have to do to find the sum of that original series, the question as it was proposed at the beginning here, is tell me what this limit is, all right? It's going to be negative natural log 2 plus something. So if n goes to infinity, tell me what does n plus 2 over n plus 1 go to, and then what's the logarithm of that number, and there's your sum, all right? I'll leave it up to you to, to do that last little bit. Uh, if you get stuck there, you're not so sure, you want some verification, let me know but I'll leave it with you right there.